Absolutely. Good to go. All right. Good morning, everybody. My name is Tim Butler. I'm a state representative from the 87th district. I live here in Springfield. Uh, I'm joined today by Representative Avery Bourne from the 95th district, who lives in Morrisonville. Uh, and we're here today to once again talk about the automatic voter registration. Um, on December 13th, uh, Secretary of State's office notified State Board of Elections that there was an issue with uh, uh, automatic voter registration in Illinois. Uh, January 20th, uh, after it came out publicly that this letter had been sent, uh, we called on uh, myself and the members of the House Executive Committee, the Repu Republican members called uh, uh, for a hearing sent a letter to the speaker. On January 22nd, uh, we had a news conference in this very room uh, talking about ABR, uh, and I called on the State Board of Elections at that time uh, to perform an independent audit of ABR. On January 29th, the State Board of Elections, uh, with a vote along partisan, partisan lines, voted down a motion to perform uh, a review of the automatic voter registration in Illinois. Uh, on January 29th, the Secretary of State's office admitted they were sending 16-year-olds uh, through the system to local election authorities. Uh, February 5th, we had an executive committee hearing, um, and at that time, we were assured by the Secretary of State that the problems were fixed, uh, and Secretary White himself at that hearing said, I've put my staff on notice. Zero tolerance will be the order of the day with the Secretary of State's office going forward. And I believe it was uh, Chairman Welch who uh, made the comment that heads will roll if problems persist after this. Uh, February 7th, the uh, Secretary, uh, Secretary of State told the State Board and local election authorities that they will not be transmitting information on the weekends when it came to AVR. February 14th, I introduced uh, House Bill 5224, which would suspend AVR and perform a review uh, and make sure that we're doing it right so we can get it back up and going correctly. On February 24th, Congressman Davis, a member of the House, U.S. House Administration Committee, convened an AVR listening session here in Springfield where Secretary of State, State Board, and finally local election officials were, were heard from. Again, we were assured that things were corrected. On February 28th, advocacy groups uh, filed a lawsuit against Secretary of State and the State Board of Elections for, quote, bungling the implementation of AVR. And then this week, what we have that just came to light this week is over 1,100, at least over 1,100 Illinois citizens were improperly registered as opt-out. So what we have here in Illinois what we've seen over the last couple months is that we've registered non-citizens to vote while we're denying actual citizens their voting rights that they have in the state of Illinois. Uh, and I'm, I'm not convinced that 1,100 number is accurate. Uh, when you talk to the Sangamon County clerk, he says there was over 100 that were relate relayed to him that were an issue when the State Board of Elections said it was only 20 that was relayed to him. So I think there's probably more than that 1,100 across the state. Um, and I would say the communications on this has been terrible, terrible from especially the Secretary of State's office and the State Board of Elections. They know, I mean, they've been on notice for a couple months now that this is a problem. And I don't believe the legislature received word one about this most recent problem after they've been before the legislature for a hearing and before a congressional listening session as well. Uh, AVR is a complete mess today. Um, and I think for myself personally, you know, we've been assured for over two months now that the problems have been fixed, yet problems continue to come up. Uh, I've lost complete confidence in the Secretary of State being able to carry out this program. It's, it is a disaster as we're looking at it today. Um, March 1 was the deadline for anyone who was registering under ABR to be forwarded and be eligible for the, the March 17th primary. Obviously, people can still register to vote, but it's my understanding March 1 was the cutoff any AVRs after that wouldn't be eligible for the March 17th primary. So we have time now that AVR basically is done for the, uh, before the primary election to take a look, take a hard look at AVR. Um, today, I filed House Resolution 827. It's an audit resolution that calls for the State Board of Elections to engage in an outside independent audit, not the Auditor General. And I think this is important. The Auditor General has an ongoing case before the State Board of Elections. I think we need an outside independent audit to be performed on the entire AVR system. And as some of you may know, an audit resolution only needs to be passed by one chamber. It doesn't need both chambers. It only needs one chamber to trigger the audit. Additionally, I ask that House Bill 5224, which is the legislation that I introduced on Valentine's Day, uh, which is the 
the suspension of AVR so we can review it, I ask that bill, that bill re be released from the Rules Committee and that we have the opportunity to have an up or down vote on whether or not we should suspend the AVR system in Illinois. And lastly, I call on the House Executive Committee. I know uh, Spokesperson Wheeler, who I talked to last night, had a conversation with Chairman Welch but, uh, yesterday about this. But I would call on the Executive Committee uh, to again have another hearing with Secretary White in attendance so we can hear directly again as to what the problems with AVR and how they're going to correct this latest issue and ensure us, absolutely assure us, that there will be no problems going forward. Uh, with that, I would turn it over to Representative Bourne. Thank you. I'm Avery Bourne, State Representative for the 95th District. Um, I joined Representative Murphy and Representative Butler at Congressman Davis's congressional listening session. As he mentioned, that was the first time that local election authority authorities had been able to weigh in on this issue in an official capacity. Um, and there we heard some really important suggestions from the clerks because they are the ones who are tasked with implementing this election that's less than one week away. This is now the fourth issue that we've seen with AVR alone. And we're hearing now that some of them may have to have two different poll books at each polling place, um, especially with clerks who are already um, having a difficult time with resources, with finding um, election judges for these polling places, having this much um, more to deal with from the Secretary of State is a problem for them. Um, in the words of Sec or, uh, Clerk Don Gray at our congressional listening session, he said, um, clerks are the bearers of bad news to these voters, right? Whether they intended to register to vote, um, voted and then they had to send them the letter or registered and then they had to send them the letter to see if they were um, citizens. They are the ones interacting with voters on a day to day basis. They are the ones who are implementing elections. And so for them to not be a part of the hearings that we've had in the House, um, I think is an issue. And certainly they're having challenges implementing these uh, or going through AVR. Um, because as Clerk Gray said, they have to take all of these registrations in good faith. And he had good suggestions. One, there used to be a paper trail. They used to see um, exactly how the voter intended on filling out the form and they could follow up. They don't have that. Um, he also suggested that when somebody is coming into the Secretary of State or another agency to change their address, why is that not forwarded on to the local election authority so they can verify that their registration um, is still up to date. They have the perspective that I think we need in this conversation and they, des they deserve to be heard um, at the hearing that Congress or that um, Representative Butler and I are calling for today. Um, they deserve to have input and like Representative Butler said, um, this is the time for suspension of AVR. Um, already the registrations that are happening now with AVR are not being uh, are not valid for this election and so this is the time we need an audit, we need suspension, and we need to get to the bottom of this. Um, it's past time that we get this right. Um, the one thing that, that I would add is that, is that, and I've said this before, uh, this legislation passed in a bipartisan, unanimous manner in, in the General Assembly. It was signed by a Republican governor. Both Representative Bourne and I voted for this. We believe in AVR. We think it's the right thing to do. We don't believe in AVR when it's not carried out properly and it's currently not being carried out properly and we need to take a long hard look at this to make sure it is the right system that we have in place in Illinois and correct the problems that we have so we can move forward without any of these questions in uh, in the future so with that the Mark. State Board of Elections called it a programming error in their letter the Secretary of State's office guessed that it was likely user error at this point can you say with any confidence that we even know the actual source of this problem. Well, I I can't say with any confidence. I've seen I, I read those reports. You have conf conflicting information from both the State Board of Elections and uh, and the Secretary of State as to what the problem is. Um, and I, I think for the Secretary of State to to put this on the the registrant themselves, I, I think is the completely wrong thing to say. This is obviously a problem on the front end with the Secretary of State's office. This isn't as much a problem with the State Board of Elections, and it certainly isn't a problem with the, with the local election authorities because they're the ones that are oftentimes catching a lot of the issues, the problems that come down uh, the pike to them. We had a lot of discussions both in the House hearing and the listening session about the processes that the Secretary of State has tried to put in place. We've had discussions about frontline employees and how they're trained. We've had discussions about whether or not those people should be registrars. We've had 
questions about um, how they've tested the system. In both hearings, we've talked about the test of the system. I think I'm, I'd have to go back and look at the record in the House hearing. I'm pretty sure I asked this question, and if I didn't ask it publicly, I know I've asked it privately of the, of the Secretary of State and, and State Board of Elections. If, if there were people who were non-citizens that were registered to vote, are there citizens who weren't registered to vote? And that's what came to light this week. That's exactly what came to light this week. So, you know, I, they, again, communication is key. Collaboration is key, and I've harped on this. They need everybody at the table, including the local election authorities, to get this hammered out. And obviously, right, that, right now, it seems like they don't know what the problem is. Is this a resources issue, or is this a competency issue? I think, I think it's, it's an issue that, um, um, you know, I think, I, think we, <laughs> I think we need to question whether or not the Secretary of State's office is the right office to be carrying out ABR. Now, I don't know if, you, if there's other avenues you can go down to somehow implement ABR in Illinois. But when, when you have frontline staff at the, the Secretary of State's office who are tasked with all sorts of things, renewing your driver's license, figuring out, you know, real ID versus non-real ID, your state ID versus that, getting your, your registration for your car, everything like that. You know, they have a lot of other things to do other than registering people to vote. Uh, and I don't, I don't you know, I, I think those people on the front line do a great job, uh, but I know, you know, you guys walk into driver services facilities, you've been there, you know oftentimes you can wait a long time. Uh, and I would, I would assume registering people to vote probably isn't at the top of the list for uh, the Secretary of State's office. There have been like 700,000, so if you took them out of the equation, is there any other state agency that <coughs> have anywhere close to that number of people, or is that a problem? Well, I think, you know, I th again, I think we could look at other systems possibly to, to make sure that that information is forwarded on correctly. Maybe, I don't know, I, th I think that's worth a discussion to have. I think sitting around the table, talking to experts in the field, uh, talking to other states as to how they've done it, um, you know, we've, you know, I, I don't think there's any lack of expertise in, in registering people to vote in the United States. I think we need some of that expertise to be housed at the Secretary of State's office right now. Um, and to talk to Representative Welch about like a possible hearing, or when would you want this hearing? So I talked to uh, um, uh, Spokesperson Wheeler, Keith Wheeler's the Republican spokesperson on the House Executive Committee. I believe he talked to Chairman Welch last night. Uh, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think, I think we need to have the secretary back before the executive committee again to answer the questions. You know, at that time, you know, he said he, he would have zero tolerance uh, and that these problems wouldn't happen again. Well, you know, here we are a month after the hearing, and, and we found out that, you know, even more problems exist. So. Well, right. Uh, in that last hearing, I don't want to use the phrase kid gloves, but you didn't exactly beat up on the secretary. What do you think has happened since then? And, uh, how do you think uh, the secretary should be received for the next hearing? Well, I, I take the secretary at his word. I took the secretary at his word at that hearing. He was, he was remorseful, obviously, of the situation, and he said it wouldn't happen again. And uh, now I, I think it's, it's very hard to have confidence, like I said, in the secretary of state's office when they said it was fixed, and it's obviously not fixed. And so, you know, I, I, I think to have the secretary there again would be, would be an opportunity for us to continue to question whether or not they're, they're carrying out this program properly. The, the, they, knew about this, though, about, they knew about this five days ago, and it's you guys bringing it to the forefront in a press conference, yeah. not them internally. Does that <clears throat> indicate some lack of interest or, or, or lack of leadership in, in, in bringing this issue to the public and explaining what happened? I think this goes to the strength of having hearings and doing an audit. If they're not going to be forthright, then it falls to the legislature to do that, and that's what we view our role is holding them accountable, making sure these systems are implemented properly. Um, and if they're not willing to come forward and do an audit on their own, then that's something that the legislature can do. This is not just with the Secretary of State's office. Um, there's other state agencies that are supposed to be doing this. Have you guys got an update? Are they, do they have the proper pieces in place? Or are they still in violation of the law? It's my understanding, one, that they do not have, that no agency has their administrative rules have gone through JCAR. So they're already operating if they're doing AVR without their administrative rules being in place. Um, the other thing, I don't think that all five agencies that were tasked with doing this in the legislation are implementing this or certainly not implementing it fully. The, the last day to register for this primary was March 1st. I'm told unless you go in and register in the same day voting or whatever they call it, provisional voting, something. Um, do what, what is happening now? Are the people being registered, as far as you know, at Secretary of State offices for the, for the general at this point? 
Uh, I do. I do not know what the exact process is now that we've gone past the March 1st deadline. Uh, I think that's a question probably for the Secretary of State's office. I do know from, from the local election authority end and talking to uh, clerks over the last few days that they are managing this situation, you know, that they've got in, in, in this particular instance, this supposed 1,100 people, that they're making sure that those people are registered correctly, that they're going to be in the poll books as, as Representative Bourne talked about. Um, but I don't know. I think this gets to one of the issues that we've talked about of, of you know, all this information getting, getting forwarded on to the local election authority. So, so if, if AVR stopped on, on March 1st, or, or for, the, for the primary election, if March 1st was the last day, you could be eligible to vote in the primary. But obviously people are going to driver services facilities today, and I, I assume being registered, you know, registered to vote by driver services facility. Uh, then those would get forwarded on to the local election authority, which I would assume would have to put those in queue somehow to, to work on after, after the primary election. I, I don't know enough of that process to know how it would work, but I think that this, that underscores some of the issues, issues with the program, I, I would think, is how, what are the systems set up to handle that? And, and you are calling for a halt to the program, is that like today? And who would have to do that? Is that Secretary of State or State Board of Elections? So the, what's your legislation number? Yeah, so, so 5224 is, is the, the legislation that I filed. Uh, it, would, it would call for suspending AVR today and having all the interested parties basically uh, get together to, to hammer this out and to do to, to review the program, to make sure processes are in place, and have it back up and going by the end of 21, I think is what the, the legislation said. By so, the end of calendar 21? Yes, correct. Couple, so the state board of elections, elections and each of the individual counties are trying to make sure this is okay and that everything's set for voters when they <coughs> go there. It, it could be more chaotic on election day, and uh, Secretary of State's office was basically trying to keep this a secret. I was in their office yesterday. They gave us a random story about real ID. Are they trying to cover this up? Like uh, this wasn't released until late last night. I think this gets to the communications that I, that I referenced earlier. Um, how the Secretary of State's office um, wouldn't want to relay this to the public after this has been such a public issue is, is a question for them. Um, I, I, really, I really don't know. They know the interest that the legislature has in this on a bipartisan level, really. I mean, there was questions from Democrats about, about how it's being carried out. Uh, and I would think in, you know, you s look, to, we have daily news conferences about all sorts of things. We have communications from agencies on all sorts of things all the time. Uh, this is one of the most important fundamental issues in our country, is the right to vote. And how the Secretary of State's office, who is so responsible for this program, couldn't be completely open and honest with the public and elected officials is beyond me. A couple of questions. Um, this was bipartisan in the past. Knowing what we know now, was it worth it with the questions of election security, um, you know, non-citizens getting registered to vote, one vote being cast? Um, is this, is it worth it uh, to make it easier uh, for people to register to vote? One thing that came up in the congressional listening, listening session is one strength of AVR, you bring up election security, one strength of AVR is you have to have an in-person interaction with someone to register to vote, which is different than you can currently register online to vote. So I think that there are strengths to AVR. We saw that when we voted for the legislation. We want people to be registered to vote. We want them to be registered to vote at their most recent address, which is easier to do when you interact with an agency. Um, and we want their registrations to be correct. And we want interactions with government, right? This is a conservative principle. We want your interactions with government to be efficient. Um, and a one-stop shop makes sense for that with an AVR kind of purpose. So I think that if it's done well, then it's the right thing. The problem is we need to make sure that it's done well. And then last month, the governor sent the president a letter talking about his national security director firing him and wanting like you know regular briefings on Russia influence or whatever it may be. Um, it also copied Republican congressional members from Illinois. They fired back and said the governor needs to stop messing with the uh, White House uh, uh, you know, personnel decisions and focus on things like ADR, which uh, um, you know, you guys are raising yet another issue. Uh, the governor's been apprehensive of calling for, a, you know, a halt to the program, saying everything's getting worked out, everything's fine. Should he take a stronger position on this, considering, uh, you know, the questions about election security? I, look, you can't diminish foreign interference in our elections, and, I, and I've said that before. But the Russian hacking in 2016 uh, 
did not change any votes, did not change anyone's registration, did not do anything. And we have put a lot of resources in to combat foreign interference in our elections. The, the federal money that's come down through the Cyber Navigator program is money well spent. And the State Board of Elections, and, and has, especially the State Board of Elections, has spent a lot of time dealing with that issue. We have an issue here before us in AVR that, as I said before, is a self-inflicted wound. This is our program that we're carrying out that actually, actually has impacted elections. Foreign interference has not impacted elections, and I'm not downplaying that, but it has not impacted elections. We actually have a case here in Illinois where a, a non-citizen voted in Champaign County. We have today 1,100 people that should have been registered to vote that weren't registered to vote. We had non-citizens registered to vote. I mean, w this needs to rise to the same level of concern by the governor as we have with the issues over foreign interference, because it is, I think it's that important. Representative Bourne, you mentioned there were four episodes just in the last few months uh, through AVR. Do you worry at all that episodes like these may depress voter confidence or depress voter turnout? I don't know that it will depress voter turnout, but I think it could make it more complicated to vote. So if these 1,100 or more people think that they are registered to vote, show up at their polling place expecting to vote, they're not registered, um, it's my belief, right, they have to go to the clerk. They have to go to the place where they can register day of and vote. And so it will just be a more complicated process. If the purpose of AVR was to make it easier for people to register to vote and vote, them bungling these things is making it more difficult. And that is exactly the opposite of what we should be trying to do. But I still believe that people are going to turn out to vote because they're trying to register to vote, right? They're trying to be a part of the process. Are you guys canceling the session next week because of the coronavirus fears? Uh, I haven't heard anything about that. You might want to check with the third floor. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.